For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. I mean, it's Fred Egan from Winchester says, uh, of course, it was recently Valentine's Day. What's the most romantic thing that you've done for Suzanne, Carl, that you can think of? Uh, I, I don't really do all that. No. Uh, the Valentine's Day stuff. It's just, the problem is, if you do it once, they expect it every year. Yeah, sure. That's That's the problem with Christmas and stuff, isn't it? It's like, it's become, that's what you do now, every yeah. year. Every day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I prefer to just sort of wait, you know what I mean? And, and you know, if I think of an idea or I know of something that she wants, I might get her something, but I might not do it on Valentine's Day. It's that thing. It's like how I've, I've said about Pancake Tuesday. Make it Pancake Wednesday. Have it when you want. Why yeah. am I waiting? Why am I waiting for someone to tell me when I can have a pancake? I'll have it today if I want one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas Pancake Tuesday, no, I won't bother. I'll have trifle. <laughs> So, <laughs> so it's the same same with this, you know, with Suzanne. Um, luckily, right? I mean, Valentine's Day and what have you. She was uh, she was ill. Luckily, so we didn't we didn't have to go out. So I'd say, is he asking for advice? Well, I suppose yeah. Certainly, we may as well give it. Treat them when they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I remember uh, once when Suzanne was ill. She had a fever, but there was no food in the house. What did you suggest to her? She was too ill. Well, it was, it was when we were still living in Manchester and that, and, uh, you know, uh, we needed to get some food in for tea and stuff. And uh, I said, come on, come to the supermarket. She was like, no, I'm ill, you go. And I ate buying food. I just sort of get a bit blank when I'm looking at it. It's too much, isn't it? That's the problem. You go down all these aisles and it's just too much. <laughs> so anyway, I said, no, come on, come with me. She was like, oh, but I've got this fever, I'm hot and everything. So I said, well, come to the supermarket, you go on the frozen aisle, cool yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> and she did, and she said, you know, it made it worse, she was ill for another three days. How would you uh, go about chatting up a woman in a bar? What, what tips could you give? Um, I've, I've, never, I've never worked like that. It's always been like a friend of a friend and all that, and just happened to meet them. And then, you know, you have a chat, and then... How did you meet Suzanne? Uh, that was when... Uh, I was working with her, and uh, she gave me 20p for uh, the hot chocolate machine. She never asked for it back. <laughs> Thought she's all right. <laughs> um, I've been there sort of 11 years, so it works. Has she ever given you that? Uh, ever, have you, have never you ever, you've never given that 20p never back? Never asked for it back. And did you return the favour, perhaps on the next date? Uh, did you buy her a kick out or something? No, I don't think I did. I think, I think word got out that um, she liked me and that. And um, what did I do? I think I did some work for her, did some editing for her, to sort of show off my skills and that. <laughs> sure. And she was like, oh, you're good at this, aren't you? I was like, yeah. And I think she got us another drink because I was, I was doing that editing for her in my own time. So you're up. You're up on the deal, aren't you? Because I, I know now, I know for a fact, you've not spent any money on her in 11 years. So you are, you're 40p up. <laughs> at least. Lawrence from New York says, I was wondering how Mr. K. Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is, if a lion could talk, we could not understand him. Even if he's English? Yeah, if he... <laughs> yeah, if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier, he's speaking English words and using all the correct uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world. His frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about because you'd have so little in common, even if he used real words. No, but he's talking English. Yeah, no, but his reference points would be just so far removed. You know, they're removed slightly when... Uh, uh, if you saw two people talking about Kierkegaard, you'd... Un you'd, you'd I hear wouldn't understand this. Exactly. So remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo, yeah, he'll he'll be saying, oh, "I'm fed up with being stuck in here." I don't know.
It's like that. It depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that it's a lion, does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away. Now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even. Yeah, but I'd I'd pick something smaller yeah. or right. or something you know a worm without a mouth. I'd go definitely not. What? Definitely, definitely not, not what? what? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just I just think that a worm that's that's on the ground. Yeah. What's it got to offer me? <laughs> It's, it's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not going to be a good day out with it, is what I'm saying. It's not going to have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right? <laughs> even if it's English. And how can you tell if a worm is English? Is it wear a very tiny bowler hat? Oh, Christ. But do you understand... What about a jellyfish? No, I, you see, I think that's where you, you, can, you can say you wouldn't be able to have a good chat with them. Because, to me, the sea might as well be another world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, in a way, I, I think the fish sort of have more rights than us. What do you mean? Just because when when whoever made the world, right, yeah. say, you know, we're just bigging up God, but if yeah. I was, was to have a go at him, yeah. I'd say, you added too much water. <laughs> <laughs> Criticism one to God, right? right. So... <laughs> you, well, how would you have changed that? Just... Just more land. Fair enough. Now, why <laughs> why, are the, why have fish got more rights than us? That because, was what I was because, interested. because there's loads of them. And when you look at the amount of sea on the world, right, there's, there's loads of that, you only have to, like, like, you know, I was in Malaga the other week, right, and, you know, you look in the sea, there's loads of different fish, uh, and that's just in, like, eight-foot water. If you go miles out, there's, like, all sorts of weird fish, isn't there, with, like, lights on them and everything. So, and there's just millions of different types. Yeah. Yeah. Now... <laughs> but why does that mean they've got more rights than us? Just because I think, wh you know, rights come in, in numbers, don't they? If you know what I mean. Like, if there's one of you shouting, people go, oh, he's an idiot, shut up, whatever. If there's loads of you shouting, they go, oh, best listen to him, see what they've got to say. Right. And, and that's what I mean about fish. <laughs> yeah. There's loads of fish. Right. So... But they're not really making their voices heard, though, are they, Kai? Yeah. I know, because they're underwater. <laughs> but, what, but what I mean is, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, right? What what do you think it's like being a crab? If you if you could go now, your mind into a crab, what would you see? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What would you be thinking? What do you think of all the other things? The crabs you'd see, the 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 squids you'd see. What what what's it like? Do you think? I want you to. It's like creative writing. Just think. Just let yourself go. Come on. Uh, it's got to be a crab. What do you think of a slug? What do you think to be a slug? What would you do if you were if you were transported now into a slug? What would you do? And you and Suzanne, you're suddenly in the kitchen, but you're a slug, and Suzanne's sort of like there, just making tea and that. How do you let her know I'd, it's you? It's impossible. I'd just chuck myself into the salt pot or something. <laughs> no, because what what do you do? I'd I'd eat that. I'd eat, that would be horrible. That. <laughs> oh God. Have you ever read uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis, no, in which a man so. wakes up and he's turned into a giant beetle? And that's the yeah, that's the whole story. Uh, I think it might be of interest to you. So what happened to him with the beetle? Well, I don't want to ruin it for you in case you read no, it. I but won't it's be reading it. Don't worry. He joined a pop group with three other people. He was brilliant. No, it's a really wonderful book. It's a kind of almost heartbreaking because, of course, he uh, he does like Ricky saying. He finds it very hard then to relate to other people, even though he still has the consciousness of a human. You know, his parents, his rest of his family, they don't know how to deal with him. You know, because he, he's a giant beetle, he becomes a freak. He becomes an outsider. It's terrible, you but, know. But hang on, though. Is he a giant beetle? Or yeah. Is he well, yeah, well, that's not going to go down well, is it? <laughs> that's That course people aren't going to like you. But if it's a normal-sized one, then you just get in with the other beetles, don't you? <laughs> Whereas if you're but a giant... How would you do that? How would you ingratiate yourself? Right, so you're suddenly a beetle. You're Carl Pilkington, right? There's other beetle. They're doing their business. They're scuttling around. And you go, you go in there, and you go, and they, go, they look at you as a new beetle. What, what's your first... What do you do? How do you ingratiate yourself? Well, for a bit, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of barge in into their house and that. I'd, I'd wait until they're out and about, and I'd, I'd like, like in life, right? Um, sort of help them out. I don't know what beetles do all day. I've never seen one doing anything. They just seem to be going from one place to another. Right. I've never seen them carrying anything. I don't know what they eat. 
I don't know what they do. I don't know why we've got them, right? But what I mean is, I'd watch them and I'd sort of help them out. And I mean, you know, it's like going on a date or meeting a woman, isn't it? But what if you there is? Whoa, whoa, hang on. What do you mean? What, what, how is it like going on a date with a woman? Well, it's like I said about Suzanne with her hot chocolate. She bought me that, and I've gone. She's all right. Right. right? She gets me another one before I know it. She's living with me. <laughs> so it's you. So you're, you're, you're all these beetles. They're scrubbing around, right? You're sort of like watching them, and there's and then you realise that you want to mate with this female beetle. What do you do? What's your first move? Yeah, but I don't know what beetles do, do I? So I don't know how, how what you do. I don't know if you go up and go. Right. What do they do? How do they get on? Whoa. It's a different world. I, I don't know yet, do I? Because they haven't done it. Would but you feel bad, because having your own mind in this beetle, right? Would you feel bad shagging a beetle? Would you feel that that was, that was a bit sick because you've got a human mind? Well, no, because you just close your eyes and that, wouldn't you? Think of something else. So, get round it that way. There's no point getting down about it because I'm stuck now as a beetle. So you've got to <laughs> get on with it. <laughs> but if you're a slug, you said you'd throw yourself in the salt pot. What would you do if you were a beetle if you got depressed? And you see all the other humans. No, you see your mates, right? They got, they're got listening to the iPod. What would you do? Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Now, beetles are different because mm -hmm. they do tend to hang about with each other. A slug's always on its own. <laughs> it's a lonely insect, isn't it? It's, it's not an insect. All right, what is it? A mollusk. Right, they're lonely. I've never seen a load of snails all together or slugs wandering about. Those beetles <laughs> seem to knock about in crowds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. oh, God. OK, all right, another one. So they're a sociable creatures, and it wouldn't bother you that, you're, that you've got the mind of Carl Pilkington in there? Because you uh, can't communicate with these people because they don't speak English. They don't, they don't have any communication with you. Yeah, but if it's happened to me, there'll be another one in there. OK, then. Right, OK. Um, what would you do, right? <laughs> that's, that's the most disgusting thing. What could it be? Um, right, what, what would you do, right, if you were suddenly a fly, right, and you were knocking around with the flies, right, and you had to land on some uh, excrement? Yeah. What would you do? Yeah, but I don't have to. What do you mean? You're a fly. You're yeah, but I it. wouldn't. No, I wouldn't be loving it, though, would I? <laughs> Why? Because I'm me in that fly's head. <laughs> so I'd, I'd just, I don't think other flies would be going, come on, join in. I'd just be like, no, I'll, I'll wait here, I'll wait, watch, and that. Because don't, I don't see why they have to do that. What would you do, right, if you had to go back and you were in a... Um, you were had to go and put your mind in, like, the, um, an unhatched uh, egg of something? Like, maybe one of those... E like, like uh, that a wasp is injected a spider. So you know you're in an egg, right, which is really uncomfortable, in a spider. How would you feel about that, Carl? You're a baby wasp in the abdomen of a spider. And I know everything that I know now. I'm, I'm sat in there. Yeah. And now I'm, now I'm in a spider as, a as an unborn wasp. What the fuck am I doing here? What's going on? I don't know what I'll do there. Uh, probably try and sleep. <laughs> There's nothing else to do, though, is there? I just pray to God it never happens. I don't believe it. He's written it down. The well, that's the jingle that signals it's time for more extracts from Carl's diary. And uh, we'll lunge straight into it. Wandered down Carnaby Street. There was a happy homeless fella. I gave him £1.50. I thought of a tongue twister after giving him the money. It goes, if you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? Good there. All Say right. it fast. If you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? Yeah, good, isn't it? Good that, yeah. You've got too much time on your hands, Carl. <laughs> Learned some famous quotes to see if they are as good as my sayings. Number one, treat every day as if it's your last. Very famous saying. Now, is that something you do, Carl? Um, but you know, my me, me problem with that one is that if it was your last, you wouldn't want to be doing much. That's, that's the only problem I've got with that. I wouldn't want to, you know go to a fairground or whatever because you're going, oh, it's my last day, what am I going to do? And I think you'd spend so much time worrying about what you're going to do that you'd end up staying in. I think you're right, 
Um, you've taken some of the poetry out of it. I think it means live life to the fullest. Right? I like the fact that you were musing on the idea that if it was your last day, you'd go to the fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting such a 19th century way of spending your final day. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the thing is, the, the other thing is that um, the only thing that people get depressed about in terms of sort of like, um, you know, life and death is uh, not the knowledge that they're going to die, but more the knowledge that they know they're going to die when they're dying. If someone told you, um, no one ever knows when they're going to die, no one ever gets an illness, no one ever gets hit by a truck, everyone passes away peacefully in their sleep, dreaming they're riding a big marshmallow, right? Then you wouldn't care about anything. It wouldn't matter when. It wouldn't matter if you died tomorrow or in thirty years' time. You just live life to the full. You'd come. You'd you'd have it. Every day would be great. You'd go out, you'd come back, you'd fall asleep. That would be amazing. There'd be no stress. There'd be no, there'd be no angsty, oh, we're all going to die stress. Because it wouldn't matter. Because it would just be your life. Wouldn't it be amazing if someone guaranteed you, Carl, you're going to die in your sleep. I'm not going to tell you when. Yeah, but You'd... some people do, don't they? Well, exactly. Yeah, but I we never know that. we're going to, because we, we stress. What if we get a dreadful illness? What if we, you know... But but we're almost not letting people die naturally anymore, are we? Because we're always bodging stuff up. What do you mean? Well, someone who might naturally die in the sleep aren't allowed to naturally die in the sleep because they wake them up with those electric things and get them going again and pop in a new lung or whatever whilst they're at it. That's what I'm saying. They don't just... Na you, you never hear it anymore, do you? Frank peacefully died in his sleep. No, he died on the operating table whilst we are putting in a new lung... They never, they don't die naturally anymore. <laughs> Frank died peacefully with 40,000 volts going through them and a couple of people going, clear, clear. Rushing about today, got to get a lot done as I'm flying to Malaga tomorrow to see my mum and dad. Don't like flying. I'd be happy if they give you a parachute instead of a life jacket. They say Da Vinci invented the parachute as well as the helicopter. He never got round to making them though because he only drew them on some paper. Got up at 5am as I had to get to Heathrow to get on the plane to see mum and dad in Malaga. Went out for a drink with a cousin who lives in Spain. Ain't seen her for 27 years. Oh, that must have been tricky, making conversation. I didn't really bother. Because <laughs> where do you start? I might no, as well so go up to anyone in the street and start having a chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to get further back than, uh, did you want Chantal to win Big Brother? <laughs> yeah. Me dad and me talked about history. I said we shouldn't go on about things that happened ages ago because I bet something similar has happened more recently. Brilliant. <laughs> read about an island in the Indian Ocean where there are tribesmen still living like they're cavemen. A helicopter tried to land and the tribesmen chucked spears at them. This is what I meant about not having to talk about things that happened ages ago. We have got new cavemen now, so why do we talk about the old ones? People could have lived before, but computers and all that blew up and books got burnt, so all they had left was what these tribesmen have got left. Ramblings <laughs> of, <laughs> of, the the ramblings mad man. of a maniac. That I mean, that's that just a few hours before you go crazy with a gun in there. No, but what what I mean there is, right, mm. say if all this has happened before, mm. something happens. Again, a right? lot of your information from the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> World ends, mm. right? We come back again somehow. Yeah. It's the detail <laughs> it's you that, leave yeah. out that makes yeah. you intriguing. Just like the watch that you can wear that uh, tells you when you're going to die. How does it work? Pop it on your wrist. That's yeah. all the detail you need. So the world happened. No. We came back. We. Uh, yeah. Have you seen the pictures? <laughs> Forget it then, if you don't get it. It's interesting that you had all those profound thoughts about this this period in the past <laughs> when they all lived, but you still you still found it uh, appropriate to include at the end of that. It says the tribesmen wave their knobs about when they've had enough of having visitors. That's what's what it said in the paper. That's what happened. They're quite happy. What paper is this that you're reading? It was it was in it was in like a paper a couple of days ago. It said um, they don't mind having visitors if they're bringing them coconuts and stuff that they can eat. Once they've got everything they need, they start waving the tackle about, and that means like right, leave now. Which you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, at a dinner party. Uh, my grandfather used to do that. <laughs> Uh, that jingle is getting more annoyed by the week. Well, this is the final monkey news, right? I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore, right? Because we've we've covered it all. All the monkey news has been covered. It has. 
It has. We've done we've done loads of them. I think all the news that needs to be sort of known has been told. Right. Um, that is the end of the news. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? Get on with it. Right. Do you know? Um, oh. We uh, chatted about the monkey that went into space and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was the one that was fed by bananas that came out of a little shoot on the spacecraft. Yeah, it went it went up there. He came back. He could never get that the high, high exactly, again. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He tried other things. I think he tried to get a band together and that. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. So anyway, there was there was loads of monkeys that were signed up to this NASA program, and it was 1961 when this little monkey called Ham, that was his name, as well as him, there was one called Enos. So anyway. What I've found out about it since then, um, Am went up there, did the left-right business with the bananas. Enos, um, they didn't put as much work into the trip when, when he went up there, and something went wrong with the machinery. And do you know how you get a banana for the left button and all that? Mm. It's official it, now. <laughs> There's yeah. two buttons in this spaceship, banana dispenser, and everything else. The right <laughs> button is everything else. But, but it worked the other way. The machinery went weird. Oh no, really? So so it meant that the right button would give him a banana. Right. The left button did everything else. Oh no. How did so that, what, so what have been though? taught? I, what, oh, this is the problem with, with electronics, isn't it? Well, no, I don't it see that. <laughs> Apparently, this is the problem. But the good thing, I mean, honestly, look it up if you want. This is all online, by the so way. So what happened when it all went haywire? What, what occurred? Well, Luckily, Carl, Carl, this is online, and it's bollocks. Luckily, um, Enos, because he'd, he'd, he'd done a few trips. <laughs> right, he so was experienced. Like, well, I know this isn't right. <laughs> as much as I love bananas, <laughs> this isn't right. <laughs> <laughs> so, was thinking, of course it was. So anyway, so he came back. They, they were all like over the moon with him. He said, I, I can't work with these conditions. Good mission and everything. Well done and working it out. He sorted all that out. Um, it moved on a few years. Armstrong's gone up there. Buzz and that other fella, they've been up there. The, the monkeys aren't needed anymore. Mm. But they were like, we've got all these monkeys who have done NASA training. Mm. What are we going to do with them all? Mm. And they mm. had to raise fourteen million pounds mm. to make him like a, a like an old sort of chimp's home for retired <laughs> astronauts. Chimp retired NASA trained monkeys. Chimpanots. Chimpanots. Something they've got in there is like a little museum, right, of all the missions and that that they've been on. So they can sort of even though they're not gonna be going into space again, they can almost relive it and reminisce mm -hmm. of the times that they've had. Um, They're reminiscing with each other, are they? Just, just sort of going, oh, remember time. that time when it all went wrong, the button became the left when it should have yeah. been the right and all the rest of yeah. it. They just, you know, sort talking of about old times, talking yeah. about old times and what have you, like old people like to do. Mm. Sure. Um, and yeah, that's it. So if you want... Perhaps we should retire monkey news to that same space. That's what I mean. So, you know, I hope you've enjoyed the monkey news and that. That was the, the last one. Look after the monkeys. Uh, do your bit. Because they've done their bit. Uh, that's it, yeah. But just because I'm not giving the news, look it up. Do you know what I mean? It's all out there. Don't be ignorant. <laughs> Wise words.